Hey there, everyone. Welcome to 3.2 of the Community Theme Creator. This build was made possible by my Patreon subscribers. Let's see, about 12 months ago, I put out a poll to see what features they wanted to see in version 3.2. And I believe I have fulfilled that request, plus some other features and a ton of changes and plenty of fixes. But this video is just going to address the, the the major features and some of the some of the nuances that I've made to the community theme creator, especially for those users that are currently using version three one five or earlier. I just want to point out some of the the the, the little changes, at least on the main window, etc. So without further ado, let's get into it. So right off the bat, you'll see that the splash screen now shows the events that are being performed before the application actually uh, is made visible. All right, so I wanted to cover some of the subtleties, okay? Uh, like I said, especially for those users going from uh, version 3.15 or earlier to, to 3.2, all right? So from the main menu on the main window, I've condensed these options here into a, a submenu. Originally, they were actually on the main menu here. So if you were looking for how on earth do I get to my media folder from here, well, you can just do it through the subfolder. So that was just, just a, a subtle change. Let's see. I'm not going to cover this in great detail, but when you go to wheel item templates, or uh, custom images, you'll see this panel here. That panel will essentially show you where these, in this case, wheel item templates, it will show you where these wheel item templates are currently used. So like I said, I'll cover this when I get to wheel item templates in uh, greater detail. But again, this is just a, another visual change to the main window, all right? So let's get into the editor itself and we'll go back into views. And let me see, I might be able to cover quite a bit of ground here if I just simply go into the system view. All right. So one of the things that you can do now is, so for example, if I click on background color for the view, I can actually copy the color from here and paste it into another color property on another UI element somewhere and vice versa. All right. So for example, let's see, I could take this color here, go up to view background color paste. And now we have a white background. All right. So control Z we're back. But while we're in here, if I click edit, and as you can see, we have a gradient in the background, I can mess around with the gradient as before, but now you can see what it looks like to the UI element itself. And in this case, it's actually the view background. All right, so now you've got live color editing. All right, let's see. This is not a game view. Let's cover this new UI element here, selected item bar. And actually, if I just go ahead and delete it, we'll just add it from scratch. So again, it's in your UI element drop down, selected item bar, and the background color will set to transparent. And uh, let's see. So it requires bullets, a bullet to show an item that's not selected, and then a bullet to indicate that the item is selected. All right. So it just so happens I have a folder called bullets, and I can go browse this folder, and it's nothing too crazy. So here's just the regular bullet when it's not selected. And this is the bullet when the item is selected. And I have I believe I've created them at the same dimension. Yes, I have at 128 by 128, just for consistency's sake. All right. So uh, the increment bullet, I'll just say background. And the current position or the selected bullet is this one. So now we have this. And it says number of increments. Now, generally, what I do is just look up. So in this case, it, this is a text list wheel. So I just look at how many entries we've got. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 
and I just set that property accordingly. So now we have 16 bullets. All right. So let's at least position it accordingly. Whoops, I had it right there. Excuse me. And if I activate the gamepad, as I go up and down through the menu options, you can see it's reflecting the current position of the list. All right. Now that's vertical and you have an orientation property here for uh, the selected item bar. We can make it horizontal. All right. And it's really just a case of resizing. Obviously it would uh, make more sense if uh, the orientation of the selected item bar matches the orientation of the wheel itself. But I just wanted to demonstrate here. All right. So that is the selected item bar and I'm going to cancel and revert everything back. And now what we'll do, we'll pick a, we'll pick a game view. I don't think, uh, I don't have a text list and that's fine. So we'll just pick this particular view and go into edit. All right. Let's see. Now you may notice when you go in and, uh, you wish to add a new UI element, the list seems a lot shorter and it is. So we have uh, a text UI element here that can now incorporate system date, system time, last play date, uh, publish date, you name it. Before I had specific UI elements for those data, uh, data items. It's all been consolidated just to make the, the, the editor less confusing. So for example, if I just add a text field or a text UI element, and uh, we're in a game view. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to increase the font size and select metadata. And we're going to look for a, a date, like game release date. And again, it's very small. It's not exactly user friendly and that's fine. Because this is a date, it has displayed another property called uh, format. So now in here, you can actually specify your date or time format. And again, you can still Use your case property here. If you want to make everything uppercase, lowercase, or first letter of every word being uppercase, whatever you want to do. But this is this is where you can get a hold of uh, the date fields. And for your themes that we're leveraging those specific UI elements like game release date or publish date or system date and time, don't worry, they'll convert straight over to a text element and it will map directly into the appropriate metadata with the appropriate formatting. So you don't have to worry about any of that. It will map right over. And like I said, so that was game release date, but we have the ones that you may want to use system date and time, for example, as you want to display the current system date and time. So I may want date up here. Let's copy this UI element and uh, paste here. And we don't want the date. We want a time over here. It's not very pretty, but I, I just want to show you the, the formatting. All right. So text UI element has, uh, has been expanded upon and dedicated UI elements for date and time have now gone bye bye. All right. Keeps everything uh, a lot more simple while we're at it. And I don't want to auto save these things. So I just want to delete them. Oh, actually, before I delete the last text field, Within the text field itself, I've added uh, two additional properties, line height and stacking. It's not really appropriate here because it's just a single line. But um, for those of you that uh, wanted to use these two properties are now available in version 3.2. All right. So now we can get rid of the text field. The other thing I want to do here is add a container, either a canvas or a grid. It really doesn't make any difference here. So let's take this grid. And the first thing we're going to do is scroll to clip to region. And that will restrict all graphical operations within that boundary, within that rectangular boundary here. And I'm going to add an image, place it inside the grid, make it fill the size of the grid, center, center. And now we're going to pick an image, all right, from uh, metadata selection. We'll just go with our trusty fan art and 
activate gamepad. I want to go to just seeing what images we have available here. Not too bad. Now, <clears throat> pretty much every UI element now includes two new properties, scale width, scale height. And uh, as you can see, I'm altering the uh, scale width here, stretching it. Same with uh, height. But if you click sync, it will ensure that whichever one, whichever slider you change, it changes the other one with the same value. So it's proportional or uniform. So at 180%, if I pick a different uh, gain, this is how you can scale up your images, for example, if you wanted to fill a particular space, all right? And like I said, these properties are available in pretty much every uh, UI element here. It's very useful. Let's see, visibility conditioning. And I'm not gonna go into some of the other metadata fields that you can pick from, but there is one that, there are two actually that I wanna call out. So let's say I collapse this image and I only wanna make it visible if, let's see, Let's say if the, if the game name starts with TO, all right? So it will only be visible. Oh, I think it's case sensitive too. It's case sensitive. So if it begins with TO, all right? Let's see what we got. Tomb Raider 3, wipe out. Obviously the image doesn't appear, all right? So basically anything that starts with TO. All right, and uh, we might as well change the condition to say it ends with ER. All right, again, Tomb Raider. I don't know what I've got as far as games here. Maybe the only one. Oh, here, yeah, no. Rapper the Rapper, there you go. All right, so I just wanted to call this out. It's a useful condition test, uh, depending on what you're trying to do here. But again, I just want to call it out. Starts with and ends with. You can now incorporate into your conditioning. All right, let's delete the image and I'm going to switch off visibility conditioning because this is important. <clears throat> so as you can see, I have the search bar here and I have visibility conditioning on the container for the search bar. All right. And if we just have a look at the property here, it's based on a new metadata field, if you will, index visibility. So when that is set to visible, the container itself will now be visible. And because that's visible, everything within it will now be visible. So it allows you to do things like this. As you can see, I've created a frame. It has rounded corners. I've given it a, a metallic looking edge and a metallic looking background. And uh, with the use of two additional grids with effects on them, it looks like the text itself has been cost, bedded, indented, stamped into the background. All right, so let me zoom out. I don't know what I did there. So while we're at it, let's change some of the properties of the um, game wheel index. And there's a ton of them. Uh, so this is all new. So the first thing that we can do is we can change the font and we can change the uh, foreground when the item is selected. So as you can see, the foreground when it's not selected is uh, dark. I can make it even darker. And as you can see, it's got live color editing. So we can see it as we're making the adjustment. Perhaps you want a fine border around each of the items and give it a border color and uh, let's give it a margin all right and we can just simply copy that so now as you can see the search bar looks very different and i'm not going to go through all the various permutations i'll certainly let you play with that but clearly you have a lot of styling options that you can now apply to the game wheel index. All right, so I'm gonna discard this change. And now we're on to the big one, wheel item templates. Now by far, this was the, the most complicated and uh, it, it didn't take 11 months to incorporate, but there were a lot of prerequisites that uh, I had to perform first 
that finally got me to including uh, the last piece, which was wheel item anim animations. So if I go to wheel item templates, we're going to go to one that I've essentially borrowed from uh, the theme components that I usually include with a community theme creator, because there's no animations. There's no animated GIFs or videos or anything with this. This was created obviously prior to 3.2. And I just wanted to go over some of the other features that you can now perform as far as imaging is concerned with wheel item templates. So if I go in to this template and if I go down to the properties panel and uncheck the selected, we have the box spine and I think I need to engage visibility conditioning. There you go. I was wondering what was going on. So what you can see here, if I just zoom in, we actually have the image spine or the, the, the spine image within this UI element here. So that's possible because I've added a whole ton of various metadata image selections to this dropdown, spine being one of them, all right? Let's see, as you can see, we have Epic Games, GOG, Origin, and Steam. Now, I'm not going to go through them all, but they're available. So if you do indeed have those images in your launch box image folder or subfolders, you can now access them through any of these selections here. But what I found interesting was because I can now get to the game box spine, I no longer have a generic image, I no longer have a generic image for the spine itself or default text, all right? So like this, this is how it used to look. And actually that is the default if there is no uh, spine image to be displayed, just so that you've got something and it's kind of consistent that you can actually see the game, all right? So as I mentioned earlier, the wheel item templates, you can now see where they're used. And as I had actually included notes for this wheel item template. The notes for this template, the selected template, appears here. So you can see you know, if you've put pertinent information in there, it's X wide by X deep, or it performs this, it does this. Something that's very informative, you can put that information in the wheel item template itself on the image canvas. So here I've just put some notes. It's a CD jewel case. All right, that's pretty much all it does. And it hasn't been applied to any view. And normally what you would have to do is go to a view, edit the view, edit the wheel, select wheel item templates, and then pick the appropriate template. And then lo and behold, the wheel is now referencing this, this, this template. From here, you can actually just say, update this wheel for this view. And as you can see, it's now indicating that it's associated with this view. And I can go directly to the view from here. It doesn't look very pretty, granted, because I would need to alter the wheel and alter the spacing. But as you can clearly see, the selected wheel item is the full jewel case. And everything that is not selected is showing the spine. And it's actually showing the spine images. So I thought that was pretty cool. All right. So that is the ability to leverage additional images that you have in your LaunchBox image collection. All right. Now let's get to the fun stuff. Again, we're going to go to wheel item templates. And as you can see here, this wheel item template is utilizing not only a couple of animations, but also an animated GIF. Pac-Man is an animated GIF. And I'm leveraging animation to make Pac-Man move from left to right uh, and actually flip. I'm using one image that faces to the right. So when Pac-Man goes off to the right-hand side and he's going to make his return, I flip the scale property to a negative value. And that forces the UI element to flip. So now he's facing to the left. All right. I'm not going to go into all the details. I'll certainly include all of this with 3.2, and you can see how I've done it. But we'll certainly go in and edit the wheel item template just so that you can see what we have here. So the very first thing we have is this 
animated border. You can see it's pulsing, pulsating. And that is based on the color animation for the frame itself. So I'm saying go from the current color, whatever the uh, default frame color is when uh, the wheel item is not selected, and we want to go to this color, right? But maybe, maybe you want uh, turquoise or what have you. It's up to you. So we're just animating the color here. And if you're familiar with animations, then you'll be familiar with uh, what you're able to animate in, in regular views. The same is true in a wheel item template. The same properties are available to you. And like I said, I'm not going to go into great detail of how I perform the animation for Pac-Man. I'll let you take a peek see with this uh, test theme. All right. And again, if you're familiar with the animation editor in the community theme creator, then this is not going to be difficult for you at all. All right. I'm not going to get into all the, the, the crazy animation on this particular template. What I do want to show you are some other metadata values that you can leverage to, to make your wheel look very different. So what I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm going to clone this wheel item template and I'm going to paste it here. I'm going to edit this clone and let's see, full screen for the frame. I'm going to switch that off and I want to make the canvas a little bit bigger. I don't know how much bigger, but we'll see. And what I want to do is rotate 12 degrees. I need to make it a little bit taller and a little bit wider by the looks of things. I'm just eyeballing it. I'm not going to bother zooming in. Let's alter the canvas. Let's say 680, 640. It's close. 630. Pretty close. Let's make this 770, 780. It's good enough. All right. So <clears throat> what I'm going to do, I'm going to say visibility conditioning on this one. I'm going to say collapse. Add, and I've added a new drop down entry here towards the bottom. Selected item index odd even. I'm going to say make this visible when the value is even. And it's disappeared because the index must have been odd. And that's fine. So now I'm copying the whole frame and I'm going to paste in place and we're going to change this visibility conditioning to odd. So obviously it's a clone. I don't want that. So we're going to make it 12 degrees in the opposite direction and it should all fit, which it does. And that's it. I'm just going to save and we can test it out right here. So now you can see this is what your wheel item looks like. And again, like I said, currently this new wheel item template is not in use by any of you. So again, right click on the view that you wish, that you wish to attach it to, update, and there you go. There's our new and improved wheel. All right. Now, obviously, if I wanted to mess around with spacing, I can do that. But as it stands, it doesn't look half bad. All right. So again, it just allows you to just have fun with a wheel and just make it look a little different to how we typically build our wheels. All right, I just wanted to show you that. Now we're going to get into some of the animation and, and, and other UI elements that you can now apply to a wheel item template. So the second wheel item template here, again, leverages, it leverages uh, animation. And we clearly have a video playing in the wheel item template. All right, so let's edit this. So let's take a look at the clear logo for the game. And we've got various triggers here. So when the wheel item is selected, I wish to perform these animations. And when the wheel item goes from a state of selected to, to not selected, I wish to do a, a, a transition animation back to its original state. If you don't specify an exit, all it will do is the wheel item template will revert back to its default state with no animations or anything. This just allows you to capture that my wheel item is going from a selected state to a non-selected state. What do I need to do? I'm just handling the basically the reverse animations 
to scale back to its original scale percentage and move it to its default location, all right? And then what I've said here is when the wheel item is not selected, basically scale the width and height forever. So let's see this in, in motion. So when it's not selected, this is what it does. So it's engaging this animation sequence here. When it is selected, it performs scaling and movement of the GameClear logo. And actually, if I had included animations with movement, oops, too fast. It's actually placing the clear logo right on the silver ring there. All right, let me just disable that so I can see all the properties. And then with canvas, we're fading in, fading out the container here. So basically all the artwork that allows us to fade the video in. All right. And again, I'm not going to go over this particular wheel in great detail. We're going to create a very basic one. And that way you can, you can watch and learn. All right. But again, you can see that this wheel item template is associated with this view. And we can just go straight to that view. And uh, as you can see, for the wheel items not selected, the Game Clear logo is scale width and scale height property is just on a continuous loop. All right. And with the selected wheel item, the Game Clear logo has been reduced in size and placed directly here at the top of the silver ring. And instead of showing gameplay or uh, fan art or whatever it is that I've selected here, it's now showing the video. Now watch very carefully when I go from one selected item to another. So as I move from Crazy Ivan to Metal Gear Solid, there was a transition. Game Clear logo didn't just snap back to its original state. It actually transitioned to its original state based on the animations that I'd specified. So we'll do that one more time as I go from Metal Gear Solid to Omega Boost and then back to Metal Gear Solid. So you have this nice subtle transition back to its original state if you wish to have that. If you don't, like I said, it's fine. If you don't specify the exit animation, it will just snap back to its original state. And quite frankly, it's just a lot faster and uh, better performance. If you don't specify animations on the exit, it's just less work for and less rendering that XAML has to perform. But again, choice is yours. You can do whatever you want. All right. So we've covered, we've covered these wheel item templates, covered this one. We created a clone and gave it an alternate look. So let's go ahead and actually build a very basic wheel item template with some animations in it. All right. So we'll start from scratch. And actually, depending on what, I'm going to use this as a guide. What? Just so that I can see. So it's 500 by 700. We're going to use the same dimensions in a brand new wheel item template. So five by seven. And what do I want to do here? A uh, basic frame with animated border when selected includes clear logo, fan art, and uh, lighting. So again, we're going to create a frame. I'm going to set it to full screen. We will go down to the appearance. So uh, border style, let's say normal rounded border. Let's make it a little bit thicker here. Thick rounded border. That's good enough. And uh, what else? Background color. We'll make it a solid black. And uh, let's see, while we're at it, might as well just add the animations to this. So when the item is selected, we want to change the border color. We're going to go from current color to, uh, let's go to that color. And uh, I can't remember what the duration was on the other one, but we can just simply say repeat and auto reverse. That's cool. It's like a pulse. Let's see. We want, uh, as a frame can only have one element. What we're going to do, we're going to add uh, another container inside it and whoops, and set that to fill the inner area of the frame. 
So I might as well just call this our uh, content container. And let's add an image. I'll call it background. Again, make it full screen. We'll go down to metadata and we'll pick fan art. And let's see, I want the form to fill, center, center. And normally, and this is a very odd fan art image to use. Let's see, what do we have? All right, that's cool. It doesn't really matter. So that's that's the background. And what I'm going to do here is just make it 50% as we have a black background because we want another image over the top. We're going to have a clear logo, center metadata. Let's see, game clear logo. So I wish I'd chosen a different game, but let's say I want shadow bottom. Maybe I don't want the depth to be 15. Let's make it 10. That was good enough. All right. So now another item I wish to add is, let's say, image. And again, I want it above the background. And I'm going to have this as star rating. And I so happen to have a folder called star rating. And let's link it to, let's see, was it, do I want user rating or is it, is it community rating or user rating? Yeah, this one. It's one or the other. So you'll always get a rating. And it was in the star rating folder. And the fallback is star rating. So if we don't have a value, we'll just default it to zero stars. All right. So we can do something like this, like that. I can't see if there's actually a shadow effect on this or not. It doesn't look like it. So let's apply a shadow effect uh, based on the clear logo. Just use the same one just for consistency's sake. So I just copy the clear logo, paste properties. We're going to paste effect. All right. Now I could have the star rating appear for every single wheel item template, but just for just for demonstration purposes, I only want to show this when the wheel item is actually selected. All right. So what we can do here is what we want to do, the first thing is when this wheel item pops up, we don't want to display the user rating at all. So basically, immediately, we want to move from its current location to a new location. When I say it was 500 by 700, so I'm going to move it to 700 with no duration. It's just going to automatically, upon load, move this off screen. And then, when it's selected, and we can have a delay, we want to move it up from its current location to define location. And we can take a second to, to make that happen. And then um, to a, when it's gone from a, a selected state to a non-selected state, I want a transition animation to move it off screen. So again, up or down, current location, define location. I want it off screen. And we can make this happen a little bit faster. All right. So let's recap. When the wheel item image is first loaded, the very first thing it does is going to move this user rating off screen, basically here. You won't see it. And then when it's selected, it's going to animate it in from the bottom. And when the wheel item goes from selected to no longer selected, you'll see a transition animation to move the stars off, sorry, the user rating star rating off screen rather quickly, but you should see it animate. So let's save. All right. That's what we want it to look like. And again, it's not in use by any view. And again, we can see our notes. I'm going to apply it to uh, horizontal wheel games one update, go to view, excuse me. So for our selected wheel item, the star rating comes in. If I pick a different wheel item, the associated star rating comes in. Let's look at what happens to those stars when I transition from Dino Crisis 2 to Fear Effect. If you caught that, you saw the stars quickly animating off screen. All right. So it's a very simple effect, and it was very, very simple to implement. And again, I'm going to leave these examples in there so you can see how it was, uh, how it was done and how it was, uh, how it was triggered.
So very, very simple. That way now you can have non-complicated wheel items when they're not selected. And when it is selected, you can bring in a, a whole slew of additional UI elements and animate them any way you want when it's selected. So it's pretty wild what you can do with it. And for me personally, just with testing, I've only scratched the surface. All right. And that is pretty much it. Like I said, I could have gone into videos, but you did see it being leveraged on this wheel item template. It's no different to using selected item video in a view. You've got the ability to do it here. And obviously with this one, we have an animated GIF that's being leveraged. So again, if you're familiar with using animated GIFs and videos and views, you'll be familiar with their usage here in a wheel item template. And again, I'll be including what's new in 3.2 with the 3.2 build of the community theme creator. All right. And I believe that concludes all the new features and some of the subtle nuances that uh, have made up this particular build. But I will include the full extensive list of changes and fixes in the description, just so that anything that you'd experienced in the past and didn't report it, or you did report it, and it has been addressed in version 3.2. So I'll include all of that just for your reference. All right. So again, thanks to everybody on Patreon for supporting me for, for, for a year or over a year now. And uh, your input has been invaluable and you truly have pushed me. <laughs> Clearly it's taken almost a year for me to pull this stuff in there. So there was a fair number of things I had to learn personally in order to incorporate but uh, you've certainly been pushing me, but more importantly, you've been pushing the software and uh, the, uh, the, the, the features that are available within it and everybody benefits from that. So I really, really, really do thank my supporters and my subscribers, and my good friend, Neil, who's been with me from day one and uh, has been thoroughly tested my software as well. Thanks to everybody. I hope you enjoy this build. It's been a blast to code and it's been a blast to test and take a step back and actually see the results, especially when I was putting some uh, promo videos together. So I hope you do enjoy it. So until the next posting, enjoy and uh, I'll see you guys soon.